Good evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday night. How is everyone doing tonight? I hope you're well and not freezing. Right now in upstate New York, it's about, um, I think the last time I checked it was seven degrees outside, so it's quite cold. Um, but uh, we're trying to stay warm. I'm just making sure I'm on here. Let's see. Oh, I am good. Good, good. Okay, so I'm just going to wait a moment to see if anyone else pops on. I was actually working on my project for tomorrow and fussy cutting this most intricate. Here, I'll show you. This is what I'm fussy cutting out. I think I've probably completely lost my marbles, the fact that I'm cutting this out. <laughs> but... Hopefully, it'll pay off tomorrow. You'll be able to see the card I make with it. Hey, Amy. Good evening. But I was just saying I'm fussy cutting this out for my card for tomorrow, and I hope I end up using it. I have been known to fussy cut this out before and not use it, uh, but I'm hoping to use it for my card tomorrow. The colors are really challenging. Uh, so, and I um, surprisingly don't have any copper paper. I must have used it all. So I had to kind of be inventive. Hi, Andrea. How are you? I'm just waiting a, a second or two to see if anyone else pops on, and then I'll get going. I'm super excited about today's card. These things, the stamp and blends. I know. I normally don't fussy cut. I usually avoid it like the plague. <laughs> did you did you see what I was fussy cutting? This is crazy. And like, I don't even know how to do in there. I'm like, do I not do it? Do I skip it? I know. Me, it's a, it's super exciting. I absolutely love it. So um, I was having some technical difficulties last week with my computer. And then the holidays hit. And I hadn't um, crafted it all. So this afternoon, I was like, oh my goodness, tonight's my Facebook Live video. I haven't even done the card. So I was like, okay, I need something to um, just whip through. And I pulled out the Petal Palette bundle because it is gorgeous and it instantly inspires me. So I knew I'd be, thank you. Um, I knew I'd be able to come up with uh, something quick and um, something that I would be proud to show you. So I'm just gonna get started tonight. Thanks, I went with a really good friend of mine to get my nails done. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. <laughs> okay, so tonight's card um, features, the, features the spotlight technique. Um, it's uh, really fun, and you know what? I didn't, oh boy, hold on. Can I do this while I'm phone still? I forgot to set my phone on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> okay, this will be interesting if someone texts me. I don't know how that affects. <laughs> you guys will be my uh, my uh, guinea pigs. <laughs> okay, so my card tonight it starts off with some basic black cardstock. This is cut at four and a quarter by eleven, and then it's scored at five and a half, which is pretty standard. Oh, that's okay, Joanna. I just saw it popped up. That's what Mary knew me that I I'm not on um, do not disturb. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so that's my card base. After that, I took a panel of cherry cobbler cardstock, and this is, um, let's see here, three and a half by four and three quarters, and then I have a slightly smaller whisper white that it gets, um, that it goes on over, and this is three and three sevenths by four and five sevenths, so it's just one eighth um, smaller, just to give it an ever so slight um, overlap there, and that's going to be pretty much the basis of my card. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take oh, this gorgeous, I love it so much. This is the Petal Palette uh, bundle. Well, these are the stamp sets. And it's a two, two, um, two case set. I don't know what the <laughs> technical terms are. But there's a lot of stamps. So it actually all comes in two um, sets. Which is great because I love these sentiments. Um, thank you. Best wishes. Congratulations. From the heart. Always good. Something like that from the heart is great. Because then you can put... Um, happy birthday from, you know, from the heart on the outside and the inside. Um, it could be happy anniversary or happy birthday. It's so versatile. I agree, Joanna. I love the set, the cherry cobbler, and I usually use it for Christmas, um, but I'm really, um, I love it with the black and the white. It just makes it pop that much more. 
So I'm going to start off using this flower bundle here. Um, this set does come with a bundle, so there are matching framelits if you wanted to stamp it and then cut it out. Um, I'm not using that. I'm just going to be stamping it. But if you wanted to stamp and cut, you certainly can do that. So here's my um, flower. And I'm going to be coloring it in with Stampin' Blends. And because of that, I'm just using plain Whisper White paper. And I'm going to be using um, Memento Black ink. Now my... Hold on, i got to get my example because I kind of want to do it the same. But I'm not going to remember how exactly I stamped that. Okay. So I'm going to open up. And it, because it's kind of big... I'm gonna go on top of it and the stamp set um, doesn't give a super dark crisp <laughs> that's hysterical hi Brian <laughs> so it doesn't give a super crisp black look it's more of like a watercolor so if you stamp it and you're like, wait a minute, that didn't give a good crisp stamp, it's actually supposed to be that way. And because I'm using the spotlight technique, I definitely wanted um, some images kind of straight in the middle. So, you know, we're going to do a couple of them. And as I was stamping this, I realized that they kind of um, fit into each other, which is kind of funny. Um... So if you want to put a bunch on a page, they really do just kind of nestle into each other, which is great. Okay, how did I do that one? I did it this way. See, they just kind of fit together nicely. Do another one there. Oops, sorry. That was a little loud. Did everyone have a nice Christmas? I just started sort of um, cleaning up today. I was like, I can't take the mess anymore. <laughs> not completely just starting and the tree's still up which is a whole ordeal that might happen on Friday so I'm just inking him up and I'm just you know there's no rhyme or reason where I'm plopping this guy other than I kind of want the page filled but not I don't want it to look cluttered I'm sorry if it's shaking while I'm doing this I realize that it's shaking a little bit <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> I got to play elf. <laughs> and then that one's going to go there. I can't wait to see what you get. Okay, so that's that. I'm just going to put that aside since we're done with that. Okay, so because we're using a spotlight technique, spotlight tech, wow, that is such a tongue twister, spotlight technique. The first thing I'm going to do is cut out our circle. So this isn't a separate piece of paper. Um, it actually comes straight from where I stamped already, and I just cut it out. So I used our layering um, circles framelits. I took a circle, and I'm going to do it here. And I just kind of went, I kind of want it, like, maybe cut out there-ish. And let's see here, i got to grab. Oh, you know what? I was going to pop my new plates on and I didn't. I only have one plate. I wonder where the other one is. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know where my other plate is. Oh, there it is. Sorry. I basically clear my workstation to do these videos and so I misplace things. So I've stamped everything. I'm just going to put the frame lid over it and run it through. I apologize if this gets you all dizzy. Hey, Karen. How you doing? Oops, oops. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So I use the framelit and I just cut out the circle. Okay. So that's where this comes from. And all I'm going to eventually do is um, put it, uh, mat it, and then put some dimensionals. So it looks like it's a separate whole stamp differently. Um, but it's honest, it's just the same thing. Okay. Next, I'm going to be using these Stampin' Blends. And um, I had some time since I couldn't be blogging and I had no computer. Um, I watched a lot of coloring videos on YouTube and there's a slew of them out there. And I really came to understand that when you are using alcohol-based markers, um, you're not going to get a super difference between the shades and that's okay. So if you look at my card, the red is ever so slightly, but you can tell that there is a difference in hue. It does add a little bit of dimension, but it's not superly defined and that's a good thing. You don't want it um, 
super defined. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the smallest end of my Stampin' Blends. Wait, hold on. Yes. <laughs> Making sure I'm starting with the darker one. And I'm going to start with the dark one here. And that's definitely a rose. And all I'm going to do, I am no pro at this, so feel free to chime in if you're like, hey, you're doing this completely wrong. <laughs> More of a smudge. Um, I'm just going to kind of outline um, the outside of the petals. Now with the Stampin' Blends, you do want to kind of work fast or at least don't cover too big of a space because in order for them to blend nice, like, nicely, they have the ink still has to be wet. So I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to grab my lighter shade. Oh, this is Cherry Cobbler, by the way, Stampin' Blends. I'm going to grab the uh, lightly lighter color and I'm just going to shade it in. Again, there's not a huge difference in, in, the, sh in the coloring. Um, but I'm first, I'm just going to concentrate on coloring in all the white spots. And um, I even like kind of went over the black because the black does leave like these little dots. Oops. And, you know, so that if you did, really didn't see any white. I didn't want to see much white. Okay. So at that point, I don't know, can you see? Um, there's not... Um, that much of a difference and so what I'm going to do is going to take that lighter Stampin' Blend and I'm just going to go over where I, I went originally with the darker Cherry Cobbler. And um, a way to get more variations in your color other than just the light and the dark is to go over them a couple times. So if I take that light color and go over the light color it will get darker. So you're actually um, you making more colors than just the two that they have available. You can definitely make different hues and different colors. Have you used their eraser pen yet? Okay. I have not because I haven't bought it. Um, these are, I only have a couple of the colors. I haven't bought them all. all. I originally bought it. Bought it. I originally bought it. No. I originally bought um, the colors that I thought I would be using like mostly in the holiday season, so like reds and greens and browns. Um, but I'm dying to get my hands on the lighter colors as well as the eraser. It does work and um, you can certainly use it to like color, or not to color, to like highlight. If I just wanted to give like a little highlight of white, like on a balloon or, or in a heart or something like that, it works really well. Okay, so I have another little rose here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm starting with my darker color. You're the pro, Andrea. You should be <laughs> chiming in about how to do this. Andrea is a phenomenal watercolor. I'm always impressed. <laughs> I learned so much. So I'm starting with my dark color, and I'm just kind of outlining it um, first. And then I'm going to come in with my lighter color. That fine. The other one here is more of a brush. I don't really need that. That's to cover like a lot of space, which I don't need. This does the job. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all my white. And I think that's a petal. That might, I'm not sure if that's a leaf. I think that's a petal. So I got rid of all the white. And then now I'm going to go in and I just want to darken that, that one gradient there. The nice thing about the alcohol-based markers is they don't leave a line. You can leave a line if you want, but unlike your water-based water markers, where if you do a line and do another line where they meet, you'll be able to see that overlap, where the alcohol-based markers blend so nicely together. I'm not a huge watercolor, and I find these are super um, user-friendly and very forgivable. But the, I originally did my first, but then I need to make more. Oh, really? Oh, geez. <laughs> Sorry, Dan, I was just reading that. Oh, gosh, that's not good. Okay, as I was making my card, I kind of like lost track of what was what, because I'm like, is that a leaf? What is that? So I'm just going to put this over here a second. And before I color this, I want to make sure that's a rose. Okay, so that's definitely a rose. Petal, pe okay, that's a rose. Okay, <laughs> I just needed to make sure that I wasn't, because right now it's kind of hard to tell what's a petal and what's a leaf. But as soon as you put it back together, you're going to be able to tell. And, um, you know, I didn't want to completely goof up. Your uh, Christmas cards, by the way, Joanna, were gorgeous. I was super impressed by your embossing skills. I love embossing. Actually, we're going to emboss tonight. 
Well, I'm going to emboss. You're going to watch me emboss. <laughs> okay, so then this little guy over here is a rose as well. So we're just going to color him in, and then I'm going to come back with my leaves. Again, we're going to start with our dark color. I apologize, I can't get you closer. I was originally going to get something like prop me up higher, and it just didn't happen. <laughs> that's okay my family thinks I'm yeah my family thinks I'm nuts for for um <laughs> crafting you know Will calls my husband calls it his craft tonight he's like I don't know why are you doing that why would you ever sit there and do that stuff but I find it so relaxing it's definitely what I do when I'm stressed okay there's that and I think was that little guy no that looks like a leaf <laughs> okay so that was cherry cobbler next I'm taking old olive oops sorry again the darker one and the lighter one they come in the um, more fine tip and then the more brush this I kind of you know just throw on a little more carelessly I follow the vein of the the leaf and I I don't really mind if I have a little bit of line in this because it does oh my computer should keep shutting down um, because it's a leaf. It's a petal. No, not a petal. It's a leaf. What is this thing? It's a leaf. <laughs> That's hysterical, Joanna. <laughs> uh, isn't it so cool, though? Embossing, I think, was one of the things I was most impressed with when someone introduced me to it because it's so mesmerizing. It goes from being like this powder and then all of a sudden it gels and like transforms before your eyes. That was probably one of the things I was most, um, I was just so in awe about it. Okay, again, so outlining in the darker color, color coming through my lighter. And this I'm just kind of, does kind of make a noise and it does kind of smell stinky. But it's all part of the plan. What kid's show does that go to? It's all part of, that goes to a kid's show. And then my last one. And then I'm going to come in and just color that guy in. I hope that's a leaf. I'm pretty sure that's a leaf. Oh, yay. I'm glad it helped. Okay, see, this is where I get confused. Where does this guy? Not there. <laughs> there. Okay. So see how it fits? I don't know if you can see very well. But that's where it goes. It was cut out. And so, um, let's see here, let me get all my components back. And, okay, so I took the scalloped, um, the next bigger size scallop. So this is the size I cut the circle out. And then I took an ever so slightly bigger scallop circle and I cut out a basic black scallop to um, mount my embossing on, my, my colored in flowers. I'm a little tongue tied tonight. So all I'm going to do is, oh, and see how that comes through a little bit? So when you're using the Stampin' Blends, definitely have something underneath as it will tend to um, run through your paper. The more color you put on the paper, the more it's going to bleed through. So definitely if you're putting tons of color on, be sure to um, have uh, some sort of paper underneath. And then I'm just going to put adhesive here on this guy and mount him on my Cherry Cobbler. Um, panel here that I have ready to go like so and then he goes onto my card front doo, doo, doo. I just used my last adhesive refill which makes me a little panicky <laughs> I have to go order more okay and I want this guy a little raised so I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals here I'm just going to use three like that peel him off whoops Oops, these things are great. I think I use them every time. Oops, oh my goodness, they're getting everywhere. Now, <laughs> we have to figure out how this guy goes on. I think he goes on, yes, like that, I think. Does that look right? Yes, that looks right. You just kind of eyeball it. Probably no one will notice if you get it wrong. I won't tell. Okay, so there's our comparisons. We're getting there. Oh, you know what I meant to do? I, I messed this up when I did it earlier, too. Sorry, don't do that yet. Just kidding. <laughs> Ooh. Don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so I'm going to, I want to create this little banner that goes behind it. 
I forgot about it and had to kind of stick it under. <laughs> but it's much easier to do if you don't have to just shove it under. So I'm going to cut a little piece of burlap here. I love this stuff. I, I could easily use it on all my cards. It just adds a nice texture. No, I don't color the base. The base says um, black and white. It's called the spotlight, so it's just focusing on a little spot there. And where did I put? Oh, here it is. Okay. With the burlap, I find it's best to use the tear and tape. This is super strong adhesive. And anytime I'm making like a 3D project or I need something to really hold together, this is the stuff I use. And I bought this ages ago and I still have a ton. So it definitely a little bit goes a long way. So I'm gonna first, I want this to fold over. And then I'm gonna take, mm -hmm, I just had it, what did I do with it? Oh, gee, well, of course it's right here. Okay, and th these are mini gold sequins. I use these so much too. They just add a nice little glitz to your project. Again, I'm gonna adhere it down with some tear and tape right on the top. I like a lot of texture in my cards and different elements, things, different things for the eye to, oops, you know, eye to look at. So I'm all about what else can we add? Okay. Now I should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't. So it's going like that. So it means I want this in this corner. So I know where to adhere it. I'm just going to take a little bit more of tear and tape. Again, I love this stuff. That's going, no. Kind of press it down so it adheres and then that's gonna go like does that work <laughs> this is really scary uh yeah that totally works okay that's going down i think yeah okay we're good it's all good it's all good <laughs> Okay, so next we're going to do, um, I'm going to work on the sentiment. This is a cherry cobbler little panel. This is three quarters by four and a quarter. So it's going to run the length of my card. It's going to over, you know, hang over the actual flowers, um, which is exactly what I wanted to do. And we're going to heat emboss it. So let's see here. Let me get all my components. Here's my sentiment. Again, the sentiment comes from the uh, petal palette stamp set right there. Thank you. Um, this week we are sending out tons of thank you cards, you know, for different gifts that the kids have received, mostly the kids. And, um, I always encourage them to send cards. I think it's a good practice and it teaches gratitude. So that's why we do it. Oh, sorry. I dropped my, uh, heat tool. Okay. So first I'm going to take my embossing buddy and so I learned, um, over over my months years of doing this that this thing can put off a lot of powder and the powder actually like stains your paper so what I do um ahead of time is I kind of rub it on my hand so like the lot of if there's a lot of excess on it it comes off on my hand and then there's just enough left there that it does its job but it's not leaving like this huge residue on my paper which will actually um you know it, it doesn't stain it but it doesn't necessarily come off yes my i usually make thank you cards and then i have three kids so they all um sign it inside so like one family or whoever um will get one card and then we all kind of sign the inside and it's special and um i have them trained they don't even ask they just know this is what we're doing <laughs> oh this is called the embossing buddy and when you're heat embossing, sometimes um, you get like speckles, like the powder adheres to the card where in places you don't want it to do. So what the embossing body does is it just gets rid of the static um, so that when you wipe it down, it gets rid of the static. So when you stamp, the powder is only going exactly where you want it to go. Okay, so I'm using Versamark ink here. Oops. And I kind of want center. So like I say, we're going to aim for center, <laughs> hope for the best, Versamark ink because it um, stays wet longer, buys you some time to sprinkle it with powder. And when I'm using a clear mount, um, I try and see like, is my bottom flat? And it pretty much, 
is for the most part. So that's my gauge like on the paper. So I try not to go too crooked. Um, I'm going to use my white embossing powder here. My little contraption that I've conjured up. Sprinkle it, sprinkle it generously. Generously. See? No specks. I'm glad that worked. If that was speckled, then, <laughs> then the embossing buddy wouldn't have worked. But it did. Okay, let me just close that or else the powder will go everywhere. Next, I'm just going to take my heat tool. It's going to get noisy for about a second. Um, it gets super hot, so keep your fingers away. And that powder will gel. Oh, I love that. It's so cool. Doesn't take much. You do want to let it cool. Um, one time I heated it and then I ran it right through the big shot and it completely smeared because it was still kind of wet. Yeah, exactly. No, it worked. <laughs> it did its job. Okay, so that's going to go there. I really want to make sure that's dry. I think it is. Okay. Oops, 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 oops. Okay, so I wanted to go under my little banner. There we go. And how about there? I can kind of move those aside a little bit so they're not in my way. Now, here's where I debated. I was like, do I add the chickadee? Don't I add the chickadee? I think he's kind of cute, but I didn't really know where to put him. I tried him up here, then I moved him down below. Um, that's when I decided to add the little um, tails here. They were kind of an afterthought. And um, I'm glad I did. He's kind of cute. He adds to the scene of things. Oh, you know what? I don't have him, in I don't have him out. So he's coming from our petal palette. And he's kind of small, he's not too big, just kind of a good size. And again, I'll try and move a little faster here. I'm sorry if I'm taking too much time. Thanks, Karen, appreciate it. So, again, Whisper White um, cardstock in Memento Ink. And this guy is going to get cut out, so I don't really care where he goes on my paper. Now, to color him in, I could have used the crumb cake. Um, would have been fine, but I actually decided to use the bronze and the ivory. They're actually kind of um, supposed to go for skin color, and you can kind of blend them and make different shades of skin colors. Um, but I thought he kind of fit my chickadee pretty well, so that's what I decided to use. I'm going to come kind of around the outside of him. Again, um, putting my darker shade down first. And then coming in with my ivory. Nope, no fussy cutting. He has a frame lip, Karen. I try to, at all costs to not <laughs> fussy cut, although my project for tomorrow has quite a bit of fussy cutting. But I really try not to. And I kind of, I don't know, I left his face have a little white spot on it. I actually had to Google chickadees to see what their coloring was like. I wasn't really sure even though we have them a ton around here. And again, if I come over, so I laid one ivory coloring down. If I come back and go over that, it actually darkens that ivory. So it's one marker, but as long as I keep adding color over it, it's just gonna keep dark, darkening the ink that's already there. So you think, oh, it's only one shade, but it actually has a ton of options. There. It really... The sky's the limit, as they say. Okay. Oh, do I have his framelits out? I'm pretty... There they are. No. Yes. Sorry, I don't hit this guy out ready. So here's the petals and more framelits. It's the coordinating framelits for the bundle. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. <laughs> um, these are really fun. They have some um, more leaves and outline stuff, but then it also has these big guys that you can cut some of the bigger images from the stamp set out. And I apologize, I'm going to do this with my big shot. It's probably going to make the whole screen shake. Does it compromise the paper? Um, I mean, if you went over it a ton, I suppose it would. Where's my chickadee? I went over him a bunch. Nope, it's still smooth as anything. Nope. I suppose if you really 
it just it's different than water it doesn't absorb it where i think the alcohol i could be completely wrong but i think the alcohol markers just kind of sit on the paper whereas the watercolor markers absorb the moisture so the alcohol markers i think just stay on the paper that's why you're able to blend it it doesn't get absorbed and so it doesn't compromise the paper now if you were to go over it and be really rough with it well yeah then it might <laughs> Okay, so we're going to cut my chickadee out with the framelit. Oh, get rid of that. Here's my framelit and my chickadee. Oh, he's so cute. Here's my card and here's my, oops, and my example. Okay, so I want him a little bit up. And actually, um, I realized that I had to put some tear and tape underneath that burlap because my chickadee over it kind of looked like he was flying. So I'm just going to put some tear and tape. Oh, can you see that? Like right there, just to hold everything down because that chickadee, it's not it's going to want to fly. <laughs> but I did take another Stampin', um, yeah, Stampin' Dimensional. One does the job. And if I can peel this, I did get my nails done and I had them cut them short, so I have no nails right now. Okay, there we go. And let's see here. I want that over a little bit. There we go. And I kind of want them between my sequins. But not covering my U. Let's see. How about, how about there? And because I used the gold sequins, I kind of wanted to tie that element in a little bit more. Um, and not just have gold there. So I'm using the metallic enamel shapes it comes silver and gold and there's hearts and there's stars but there's also circles so i just kind of now this is stamped Oop, oh i just dropped there it is <laughs> let's see here how about we put one over here there are two size circles which are kind of oops that's too far can i get that off no i cannot that is staying okay that's going to stay there <laughs> and let's put one up. again i don't have nails it makes it so challenging and we'll put another one down here. I love these things. They are just a little extra detail to the card. Oops, go away. There we go. Oh, thanks, Joanna. This was just fun. Again, I literally just whipped this up like two hours ago. Kind of panicky, like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything for tonight's Facebook Live video. But this stamp set, the bundle, is so inspiring. The shapes and the images, and they're fun Um you can um, use the Stampin' Blends, you can use watercolor, you can use an aqua painter, you can use the crayons. There's so many different ways you can color these images in um, that it just makes it so much fun and the possibilities are really, truly endless. So um, there's tonight's um, video. If you haven't um, left a message already, please do so. I'll pull a name um, when I'm done and you can... Um, earn tonight's card uh, blank inside so you can send it out however you'd like bless someone else so um thanks for joining me tonight everyone i won't see you until um after the new year i surely hope you have a wonderful new year and i'll be seeing you in 2018 um, bye everyone